stress. You can measure that directly with this kind of test, or you can measure that uh, in an indirect way with the Brazilian test, in which you basically uh, add a stress uh, along the diameter of a circular sample in order to cause a tensile stress perpendicular to that. So uh, half of you have already done this in the lab. The other half will do this uh, today, all right? Uh, I, have, I have a question about this, and I like that, that, you, that you answer, especially those that have already made the, the lab test. Uh, probably will be uh, particularly suited in order to ask this, to answer this question. Just give me, give me a sec. Um, I have, I have a rock sample over here, okay. And I'm going to perform a tensile strength test. Raise your hand if you think that I can split this rock with my fingers. No one? The, this is a Berea Sanson. You, you, all of you tested it in the lab, right? You know it's, it's relatively strong. And, uh, and some of you have already done the tensile strength test. So no one, no one believes that I can break this rock with my hands. I have strong fingers. Well, I used to have strong fingers when I was doing rock climbing. Get, getting back to that. Uh, but no one? No? Not even for some extra points I can get uh, some hands up? Okay, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, okay, look, look, look at this. I'm going I'm to show that I can split this rock with my fingers. And probably I can just do it with one hand, but I'll do it with two hands just to make a case. Look. <laughs> you, you, you might think this is a silly example, okay? But it, 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 it is not. Um, most times, uh, we think of rocks as being continuous. But many times, rocks have fractures, have discontinuities. Uh, so if, you, if I wanted to split now this piece of rock with my hands, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, okay? And uh, because I'm just trying to split this part and it's not possible. Even if I wanted to split these two halves, but now in this direction, I can make it. But in this other direction, I can. So tensile strength, I, I like that you remember this. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a property that also depends on scale, uh, on length scale. It depends on the size of the rock that you're considering, on the size of the process zone. So if, for example, uh, you were to if you were drilling a wellbore and you're drilling a wellbore, we're looking from the top in an already fractured formation with two sets of fracture that are almost in perpendicular direction. If you drill a wellbore through here, probably the tensile strength that you have to consider for your rock is going to be the tensile strength of the intact rock or the rock matrix. But if you were to drill a wellbore somewhere uh, over here, that goes through the fractures, that, that's, that's going to be a different story. Because now you're going through those uh, weak interfaces. So uh, both the tensile strength and the shear strength, which is something that we're going to, to talk uh, uh, about right now, uh, is scale. Dependent, and I have some nice, some other nice examples with some nice figures in my notes. If you go uh, over here, uh, uh, 
uh, it depends. No, I wouldn't want Nicole Kidman. Uh, it depends on the size. Uh, so, so let, let me show this figure, and then uh, probably it's going to be clearer. What's going on? So, if if you measure the strength property of something very small, you're just going to test the properties of the rock itself. But if I had the same rock, but I tested it at, the, at a much larger scale those properties are going to be quite different. If in that same rock you have fractures inside, uh, the, the properties of all of that uh, are, going to be, are going to be different. I don't know what's going on here. It's not loading. Hmm. It was there before. Let me try. Okay, so okay, so this is the image that I want to share with you. Uh, it depends what process you're considering. If you're considering uh, drilling, wellbore stability, if you're considering hydraulic fracturing, or if you're considering reservoir depletion, uh, the size of the rock that you can see is very different. Going from a few inches to uh, hundreds of feet, uh, even to kilometers, uh, to several kilometers. The properties of the rock are going to depend on that. If you go and fracture a naturally fractured reservoir, already in, in there, there are a lot of natural fractures that are not going to allow us to use the tensile or, or the strain properties in general that we use for a rock which doesn't have any fractures at all. Um, were you raising your hand? No? No? Nobody? Okay. So, uh, all right. So, th this is a very important concept, okay? And, uh, and, and I hope that, that I made a point with that. But let's continue uh, talking about, uh, about strength. All right. Uh, that, that's it about about tensile strength. Now we're going to talk about shear strength. And the first thing that it's, it's going to help us, uh, or it's going to help the rocks to have a shear strength is friction. You're very familiar with this concept of friction, right? So let's say that if I have a surface and I have a block, and you apply a normal force on the on that block. What is going to be the force that I need in order to move that block? Ft. I know that you know these guys, so please tell me what is going to be this equation. Ft is going to be equal to the friction coefficient that we're going to call mu times the normal stress. Right, uh, so the the more friction uh, you put on uh, on a solid, right? You know, if, if I let this, this is gonna fall. But if I apply normal stress here, this is gonna stay, and I can even put st stress in here that's not going to move. So the more stress you put, the more it it stays there just because of friction. And with granular materials, it's, it's very similar. If I gave you uh, a bunch of sand, un uncemented sand, and I, if I threw that here on, the, on, on this desk, it would just pile up and it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, stay up, right? But if you add that same uncemented sand, if you were to add normal stresses around that sand, by applying a effective stress, uh, 
And let's imagine that effective stress applied by a membrane around the sand. So I put a membrane around this, and I apply a stress in all directions. I'm going to be able, I'm going to call this sigma r, I'm assuming this is a cylinder. Uh, I'm going to be able to add an, an additional stress that I'm going to call uh, all of these, I'm going to call sigma a, uh, a from axial. Uh, I'm going to be able to apply an additional stress. So this additional stress is that additional force. So why, why, why am I able to add this additional stress without the, the, the rock or the sand failing? Because if you go here at the, at the, if you look with a microscope and you look at the grains, you will actually see that because of this effective stress, now there is a normal stress that is bringing the, the grains together and because of that additional uh, normal stress, if you try to apply uh, or to move these ones in this direction, they, they won't move because you have the same friction forces, grain to grain. It's the same thing as over here. The higher the normal stress, this will be our Fn, the bigger the Ft that you need in order to uh, move this particle against to that uh, uh, other one. And that's because of friction. And the higher you may, the same as here, the higher this normal stress between the grains, the higher the, the shear stress that you can put uh, in here. Uh, in order to cause that displacement grain to grain. Uh, and I have an example for that. So you remember that we talked about effective stress and we talked about this, this coffee, right? And, uh, and this is ground coffee. It's not cemented at all, but it's hard as, as a brick. You see? It's very stiff. And uh, let's see how stable is this. Uh, not very stable. I don't know where I can do my trick here. Uh, pro probably if I do it here, okay? You think I can put all my weight on this and it's going to resist my weight? Yeah. Why? Uh, we, we actually, we, sh we should make some uh, computations, but probably next time. We don't have time, time today. But, but, but look, I I'm going to put all my weight on top of this and it deformed a little bit, okay? But uh, it it's still keeps its shape. So I'm, I'm, I'm standing over here, all my weight almost is in there, and it, it doesn't, uh, it deforms a little bit, but still keeps its shape. And that's because it has an effective stress. So all this uh, ground coffee is, it has normal stress, grain to grain, and, uh, and because of that, it can resist shear stress. And do, I'm gonna do it more time now, everyone is here, okay? So, uh, I'm gonna put all my weight on this ground coffee, and it, it didn't break, keeps its shape. And now I'm gonna open it, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, Make, make silence, okay, because if, if uh, we'll try to hear the vacuum uh, or the air getting in. So don't make any noise. Did you hear that? No? Okay. Well, uh, actually, I, I, I made a hole now, okay? I made a, a, a small hole over here. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And, uh, and now the pressure inside is not close to zero anymore, uh, but now there is no effective stress, okay? Because I made a hole in it. There is no membrane anymore. And now I, 
I just, you, you see, I just, with my hand, uh, I'm, I'm going to open it more because now it's just a membrane, the one that is resisting in tension. But if I were to open it more, we know. Uh, we know a confined stress at all, uh, you will see that this one doesn't resist any stress, right? You see? Ground coffee, uh, no cementation at all, it just had effective stress. I need to keep this coffee because I'm going to drink it later. It's, it's a good one. I like it. Uh, it's the same thing with, with sediments with sand, with clay, with silt, even without cementation, uh, its strength is going to follow a law in which this line is going to go through the origin of a sigma n tau plot. And the maximum shear strength is going to be equal uh, to the friction coefficient times sigma n. It's basically a line, right? A line that goes through the origin. And all the state of stresses that are going to be uh, possible without failure are going to be below that line. And the state of stress at failure if I draw a more circle, it's going to be something like this, where this is going to be the maximum principal stress, and this is going to be the uh, minimum uh, principal stress. So this will be uh, the shear strength of uncemented sediments. You may, want, you may say, oh, and what is the value of the friction coefficient? Uh, the value of the friction coefficient is very similar to the value of friction coefficients for other surfaces, and it varies more or less uh, from 0.4 to more or less 1, or sometimes it can be, can be a little bit larger. That's actually uh, that something that you have uh, to measure for uh, your particular uh, sediment. Um, all right, so, but that's for uncemented sediments. What about now your grains are cemented? You have a question? This is sigma n. Yeah, n from normal, okay? And in this case, uh, we are assuming that this is sigma 1, is our sigma A that we had before, and this one is sigma 3. But Let's add now the component of cementation. Uh, you run experiments in the lab in which you subjected rocks to a non-zero uh, stress on the axial direction, uh, let's say somewhere over here, sigma 1, with no confining from the sides, so sigma 3 is equal to 0. And as a result of that, now you have a more circle, which will be somewhere over here. So this is the minimum principal stress now. And the, the maximum principal stress is sigma 1. The minimum principal stress is 0. Uh, for these kind of materials, look that now uh, they, they are not uh, uncemented. Uh, 
uh, they are cemented. And it turns out that very similar to the uncemented materials, they also have a, uh, an effect which is called that they are stress sensitive. What that means is that the higher the mean stress or the higher the confining stress, uh, the stronger the material gets. So for example, this material now, this uncemented material is at this value of sigma 3, confining stress, and I get as much as this value of sigma 1. This is the maximum stress I can apply before it fails. But if I were to increase the value, say somewhere uh, over here, I could e even put a larger stress on that sand. So the more stress we apply, the stronger the material gets. So this is easy to remember, guys. More stress, rocks get stronger. OK? And you should be also like rocks. With more stress on you, you get stronger. OK? Uh, this is a property that I, I said before. This is something called stress sensitive. And it's all because of friction. And it's going to be very similar also with the cemented sand. With the cemented sand, even if you have some cementation, if you add more confining, you're going to be able to get a stronger material. So it is exactly the same material, but now it has more stress. And when you have cementation, now your shear failure line or your strength is going to be slightly different and it's going to be now we have an intercept here which is called cohesive strength and we have the stress sensitive part because of friction and we're going to call this internal friction for cemented rock times sigma n but it's just a line okay it's just the equation of a line and uh, le let me add here, uh, in this case, well, I'm, I'm going to draw another one over here. How did you call the maximum stress that a rock can support without stresses on the sides? This is something that you already did. Unconfined compressive strength, right? That was laboratory number one that we you went a little bit further. Uh, on concepts that we haven't seen before. But if sigma 3 is equal to 0, then the sigma 1 at failure is going to be called the UCS value. And that stands for unconfined compressive strength. If you have a confinement different than zero, uh, then uh, that's uh, it's, it's not going to be unconfined compressive stress. And this value over here, you will just measure it uh, from similar to the unconfined compressed strength. It's just going to be a peak, the maximum value of stress that the rock uh, can take. Yes. Uh, in the laboratory. In the laboratory, we, we call it uh, confined stress. But in, in essence, it's just the minimum effective stress, sigma 3. Yes, Mr. Ewan. Can you determine where the line is going to be? This? Oh, we're, we're getting uh, there right now. But you know, conceptually, this is what you should remember. What, why do we have here a slope? Because of friction. OK? So shear strength is proportional to normal uh, stresses because of friction. Uh, why do we have now this one uh, to be not equal to 0? Because of cementation. OK? And it's just 
this is just a constant and this one is called cohesive strength it, it doesn't have it has some meaning right but it's, it's just a fitting parameter what you have to do in the homework uh, is to fit these lines of shear strength okay but you're going to do it a little bit differently and um, we're going to use something uh, which is a little bit easier uh, to deal with instead of dealing with shear stress and normal stress uh, b b before I go through that uh, you notice that when you fail your rocks in the laboratory let me see which one is which Uh, okay, this is the one. When you fail the rock in the laboratory, it failed at a particular angle, right? It was a, it was steep angle uh, from the horizontal plane, and and there there is a reason for that. Uh, that failure angle is. is the angle at which you will expect failure uh, this is the line I just drew that you will expect failure in shear and that value of normal and shear stress is the value sigma n and tau at which you will have that shear failure that one over here and it's the same with this one, if you have failure over here at that point, notice that's the point where the Mohr circle touches the line, you will have a failure and at that orientation you have here the normal stress and here you have the shear stress. Uh, we'll see later on when we go into the Mohr circle that this is the point of the maximum ratio of shear stress to normal stress so if you look at this point here the shear stress is pretty high so which is this coordinate and the normal stress is relatively small not zero but relatively small the ratio of this to that at this point is the maximum in this case and it's more evident here right that's the point of the maximum slope and that's the point at which the rock uh, fails. Okay, so uh, there is a slightly different way of looking at this data. Instead of looking at the stresses on the plane of failure, you can just look at the principal stresses. And if you do that, if you just look at the principal stresses, uh, we could do similar tests to these ones that uh, we specify what is the effective uh, verticals uh, the effective uh, minimum stress and we measure what is the maximum stress at failure or the peak stress so basically here I have a test in which I prescribe and I set what is sigma 3 and I measure what is the maximum stress that the rock can take in perpendicular direction. If I run many of these tests for different sigma 3, I'm going to get, uh, let's, let's do the one, what about sigma 3 is equal to 0, right here? How is this value going to be called? This is going to be the unconfined compressive strength, right? And if I keep on increasing the confined stress, I'm going to get a line because this is going to increase, 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 in which the equation of this line is going to be sigma 1 is equal to unconfined compressive strength plus a parameter that we're going to call Q is a friction parameter 
times sigma 3. Same as before, it's just the equation of a line. And uh, you can do some math, and you will find out that that parameter q is equal to 1 plus the sine of the friction angle divided 1 minus the sine of the friction angle, where the friction angle, uh, or let's try it this way, the friction coefficient is equal to the tangent of the friction angle. And the friction angle, we need to come back over here, is that angle over there. So the tangent of that angle gives you the friction coefficient. Uh, and and that, that those are almost all of the equations that, uh, that you have to know in order to solve the homework. So let's look at the homework, okay? Because you have to solve the homework for tomorrow. And, uh, and this is almost everything you have to know. There is one more thing that you have to know uh, that I'm going to explain now. Uh, let me look for that file. Uh, any question ab about, about that till I find that file? No? Uh, okay, so I think this one just crashed. So let me close it. Shopping with Firefox. We'll try this way. Okay. We'll go to assignments. Homework number three, and open. OK. So the first problem is uh, a problem in which you have to calculate uh, this, this line. OK? And here, the, the only thing you have to do is, uh, for that case, you need to consider that also inside rocks sometimes we have pore pressure and if you have pore pressure inside the rocks uh, probably what you're going to measure and what you're going to apply 